122 volts AC. Power off. A plug with exposed connectors. Power on. 60 watt electric bulb. I touch one terminal. And I touch... Oh, forgot to pay my electricity bill? Just kidding. Once again. Power on. The bulb. Touching one terminal. And the other. Are you shocked that I am not getting shocked? Don't be. It is not magic. It is a separation transformer. But don't be fooled. It can be dangerous. So this video is not how to, but treat it as an entertainment show. I got my hands on such a transformer that was used to step up voltage from 120 to 240 to power up an European appliance. The appliance died and I inherited this chunk of metal free of charge. 1000 ampere volts. Heavy metal. I will make a separation transformer out of it. Why do I need one? I will explain in this video. We'll put electrical outlets a switch and breakers here. But first I will pull it from the case. Two nuts hold it to the case. And it is out. As per this sticker, the secondary windings can be connected to give 120 or 240 volts. To step up or down voltage makes sense, but transform 120 to 120? My transformer, my choice. Now I will check if the windings are intact and any possible shorts between them or the core. Looks good. Let's test it. Power cord connected to the primary via breaker. Secondary connected in a way to give 120 output. So it is 1 to 1 ratio. The plug goes into the outlet. And I have 120 volts at the secondary. The transformer is back in the case. Now I check if everything is connected as it should. The cover. The front panel switch and breaker. This part is connected to the primary winding. Two outlets, small indicator lamp and a breaker on the secondary winding circuit. The breaker sits lower to give access to it when something is plugged in. Now Let's do some measurements. Since I will measure voltage and current, I will use two separate multimeters for each task. This way will be safer. 
don't need to remember to change plugs for the sounds. Around 120 volts at the outlet. Grounded case and one lead of the secondary winding, 19 volts. Where does it come from? The second lead of the secondary to the ground, 106 volts. But is it really? This multimeter has low Z function. Let's use it. Once again, around 120 volts. This time to the ground we have near zero volts. Here we have zero volts. I made a video about ghost voltage before. Let's check the current. If I plugged both to the outlet, it would give me a big flash. No, different kind of flash. The ammeter has very low internal impedance and plugging both sounds at the same time would create short, trip breakers and burn fuses in the meter. And hopefully only this. So I warn you again, playing with electricity can be deadly. But I can check the transformer leakage current. From one secondary lead to the ground, I have 45 microamps. The second lead is just 15 microamps. The electric bulb, 60 watts, draws about half amp to lit up. Well, I definitely can be killed if I touch two of the leads at the same time. No problem touching one at a time. And I can use it to safely, well, relatively safely, test electronic circuits. I just must obey one hand rule. After plugging in tested equipment, I would use one hand to attach an alligator clip to a certain point, and then I would take a probe and use the same hand to check voltage or current relative to the alligator clip point on the circuit. So what is the secret that I don't get zapped? Here is the diagram which explains how the separation transformer is connected and how it works. Here we have an AC power source. This is a separation transformer. Electric current flows only in a closed loop. This is a hot wire which supplies power to the transformer's primary winding. This second neutral wire closes the loop and it is grounded at a certain point. When we touch the neutral wire, nothing happens because we have the same electrical potential as the earth that we stand on. But if we touch the hot wire while standing on the floor or the ground, the loop will close and electric current will run through our body. We will experience an electric shock that can be fatal. The separation transformer doesn't have a galvanic connection between windings. The secondary winding loop can be closed only when we plug in any electrical load or when we touch both ends at the same time. Closed loop, the electrical current flows. When we stand on the ground and we touch this end, nothing will happen. This circuit will not be closed because it is not connected anywhere to the ground, as it has reference to the ground in the primary loop. So we have here what is called floating voltage. No reference to the ground. We can touch this point or this point, but never those two at the same time. Because if I touch those two at the same time, 
the loop will close and the current will flow causing dangerous electric shock. When we look at the primary winding circuit, the electric potential between hot wire and neutral or ground wire is 120 volts. When we measure voltage between neutral wire and grounding wire, which is basically the same point, then we read zero volts. When we measure potential between secondary winding points, it is 120 volts. When we measure potential between this point and the ground, then it is zero volts. Same story here. This end reference to the ground gives us zero volts. Voltage is present only between those two points at the secondary widening of the transformer. When I touch this point while standing on the ground, the voltage is zero. No current flows, no electric shock. Same with this point. To the ground, voltage is zero. No current flows, no electric shock. But the truth is a little bit different. The current is flowing to the ground. It is called a transformer leakage current, but it is so small in this case and insignificant that a regular person will not feel anything. It could be a different story for a person with a pacemaker or somebody sticking the wire to an open wound. Warning! There are separation transformers on the market with the secondary winding grounded. They serve a different purpose have reference to the ground and touching outlets of such transformers can be deadly. So why do we use grounding? I don't know. Do your own research. Using a separation transformer we can do measurements using an oscilloscope without fear of connecting it in the wrong way. But the problem is that the crocodile clip on the scope's sound has direct connection through BNC connectors to the ground. Therefore, our separation transformer secondary winding will be grounded and we lose the protection from electric shock. The scope is protected, but you are not. Without a separation transformer, connecting an oscilloscope to an electrical outlet can be tricky. You have 50% chance to do it right and 50% to do it wrong. Everything is nice and dandy when you connect the alligator clip on the sound to the neutral in the outlet. Doing it the other way, you will make short to the ground and risk destroying your scope and even being electrocuted. But always look on the bright side of things. If you do, you can join the Angel Squire. And considering your experience, maybe they will let you cast thunders. We can use an oscilloscope safely without grounding the secondary output and without risking short circuit through the scope by using two probes without alligator clips. See you later, alligator. Two-channel scope becomes one channel with no reference to the ground. In a while, crocodile. Probes switched to times 10. The scope set to add mode with one channel in the invert position.
Wow, even when the transformer is not powered on, it deflects the beam in my CRT. Set apart now. Channel 1. Green sound on the right side connector. Sine wave on the scope and the camera doesn't cooperate. I switch the sounds. Sine wave on the scope. Voltage is floating. No grounding. I am safe, kind of. And the scope is safe. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> you don't know the power. Till next time. <laughs>